Yeah, we are off so to a very good start. So let's uh, welcome Professor Mwanga Zake. Uh, just a, a brief introduction of uh, Professor Mwanga Zake. He's professionally a learning technologist. He's a scientist and an educator with teaching experience in Uganda, in Lesotho, South Africa, USA, uh, Australia, and the UK. And his interests and publications are in research and African philosophy. Uh, he has taught, lectured, and written academic articles in philosophy, in science, uh, in uh, education, research, and learning technology. And he has been a uh, head of ICT, head of academic departments, dean, uh, a deputy vice chancellor, and vice, uh, vice chancellor at various universities, as well as a director of a training NGO in South Africa. So he is now a professor at the Uganda Technology and Management University, Utamu Kampala, uh, Uganda. And he's going to present uh, on salvaging African development and environmental sustainability through Ubuntu Bulamu in contemporary education. Please welcome with, uh, Professor Mwanga Zake. for this wonderful arrangement and putting up this organization. I didn't know that it existed. <laughs> so maybe you need to advertise it more. I didn't know I'm actually preparing a paper from this to submit to one of the students also on the website. There are questions about uh, using your Ubuntu Blum in research. I've been fortunate to publish a paper on bridging uh, between Ubuntu and Western paradigms in research. And I went into that quite deeply. Uh, however, I want to advise those students that uh, in your research, it is not a question of choosing Ubuntu Bulam. I think it is a question of validity. When you do research, you must use methodologies, philosophies, and whatever, which are valid for that context. I had this uh, when I was at Rhodes University uh, in South Africa. And I remember having had to actually argue with my supervisor then at Grahamstown. Uh, when I went out to investigate the adoption of ICTs in South African schools, and I discovered that the Western-based paradigms were not applicable because the people we are dealing with were about two people whose interrogation of what you are trying to research happens away from you. It happens in their communities. You give them uh, questionnaires, they will carry those questionnaires back to their communities, engage with their chiefs, with their friends, with sometimes even in the pubs. So, you are absent from the actual research that you need, the responses that you need. So you have to be part of them. That's where, to me, Ubuntu started to trade itself in my research. I said, if I am to get valid responses, I have to go to those pubs. I have to go to those communities, sit with the chiefs, get their view of what we are trying to do. And that they cannot share unless you are a part of them, unless you are Ubuntu. So contextually, I had to use uh, Ubuntu as a philosophy, and I've written quite a bit about it. Uh, the only thing I wanted to point out here, the choice of using Ubuntu is not just a choice. It is a requirement of validity when you are working within Bantu communities. That's the way I see it. Anyway, go on to this. Uh, as you can see, and it happens quite often, you come, you start with um, one idea, and then you find that what you are trying to write about is not actually the title you gave out. 
uh, we changed title. So I ended up with subjecting African Sustainable Development through Ubuntu Lamu. And of course, Ubuntu Lamu is the version of Ubuntu or Ubuntu in my country here in Uganda, we are here. It is Ubuntu Lamu in South Africa, I think in Tosa and the Sizuru, it is Ubuntu and in Sisutu and the Swan, I think it is Ubuntu. Uh, so the idea I have here is really uh, that our development sustainable, uh, sustainably is linked with our indigenous knowledge system, IKS, with our environment and the community. Where I mean communities beyond human beings because it includes animals and plants and everything that is around us. And it is also linked with our ability to secure our environment and adding value to our resources using our own values. Because again, what we have seen is the values added appear to the foreigners most of the time. Uh, I try to look at the concept of IKS as a local board of local knowledge and skills unique to us. Uh, of course, each of us have our own. Uh, I, I'm sure Europe, China, Japan, and wherever you go, they have their own IKS. And here, we want to refer to African IKS. And um, ours, and for a reason, has been tacit, second and embedded in practices and rituals and relationships. I think a lot of people thought we didn't know how to pass on knowledge. Or... The point that it is tacit, I think, was deliberate because some of these practices and rituals, we are secret, we are secrets. And this is not unique to us because. Uh, Western, the Western world has its own ways of protecting their intellectual uh, rights, you know. They protect, we did, and we still do, although right now, because of money, people sell out. Once they learn of a secret, they go and sell it in the public, hence the destruction of some of our practices. It is systemic. Um, in this, uh, we, we didn't know physics, chemistry, mathematics, and so on. We are integrated. We did things in an integrated way. A lot of our folklore, uh, you know, the stories we are told, we are so much uh, uh, combining so many skills all together. And until then, it was, we were antagonized by these colonial legacies, especially through education. I forgot to add religion, yeah? But also in relation to the current topic by Western development models. So um, I, I don't need to belabor this. I do believe that each of us know where our bond originates, then two suffix. Um, but the most important thing is that um, this suffix is the, is the foundation of our humanness, you know, in two, right? Um, so it is humanity itself. And because it is humanity, uh, it is collectivist. Why? Because as human beings, we work together on a lot of things. Um, it is Afrocentric uh, because, of course, uh, Bantu are found in Africa and cover actually three quarters of Africa. But many times it is in reference to our social conduct. Um, it is a part of the IKS. It is, I take it as a philosophy. Why? When you deal with philosophy, you, your question is uh, why you are doing or practicing certain things. And of course, unfortunately, that question of why philosophically has no answer. Uh, somebody would say, why not? But the why of what in IK is, is questioning our existence and how we survive as human beings in our environments. 
uh, it is so much about consensus, again, that is humanity, and it defines each of us in terms of others. And it's very, very interesting that uh, wherever you go in Africa, often people want to find out where you come from. Uh, when I was living in South Africa, you would reach somewhere. As soon as you went to a pub or some party or some place, first question in Gumuni. <laughs> and here, we normally ask, we have clans, for example, which relate us and group us in particular uh, totems. So there's a desire for consensus, uh, and communal agreement. Um, okay. um, so, uh, in a summary, uh, these are given different references. People. Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Kulamu, Ubuntu. It is humanness. What does it mean to be human? Uh, it is uh, respect and dignity, discipline, tolerance, harmony. Peace, compassion, that is including listening, uh, sympathy, open mindedness. I mean, if you are going to be compassionate, you must be open minded. Uh, you must be able to analyze problems of other people. You must have empathy, understanding of the others. The solidarity that is working together, teamwork, moral support. Is, uh, as human beings, we survive as communities, as societies. So in that survival, there must be helping each other, sustaining the environment we live in, cooperation, empowerment, commun communal living, responsibility, this interconnect interconnectedness, equality, support, sharing, and respect. And some of those are repeated. That is Ubuntu in summary. Um, I don't know whether we have uh, a word for development in so many African what, uh, languages. Hi, Prof. Hello. The, the volume is going up and down, up and down. Maybe it's the end. Oh, okay. Uh, let me fix it. Okay, thank you. So, uh, what I know is that uh, development is impossible. And so much that it is external to our understanding. Um, so, uh, uh, through education and economic paradigms, normally through the IMF and the World Bank. It is guided by industrial revolutions and they attended fiscal policies. Now, the challenge we have in Africa, one of the challenges is that for us, like here in Uganda, we have a cocktail of industrial revolutions. What I mean here is that in my village, you'll find people who have never touched a mobile a smartphone who cannot understand what is written on these websites, uh, whose culture are so far away from what we watch on TV and what goes on WhatsApp. On the other hand, you come to the city and you find people who are in the industrial revolution of five or four, four years. So there's this cocktail. And I don't think our people know what to do with this cocktail. But what I know is that it is a result of importing development models and revolutions that have not evolved from within the society. Because if you go to Britain, Japan, China, these are developing from their own society. So there's a clear trajectory of development. In Africa, I moved from Kampala here with my mobile smartphone and the land in the village. The contrast is so dire. It is worrying, actually. 
And as a result, we don't know how to design our curricular education. And Ex excuse me, Professor, is it possible to uh, increase on your volume, please? We have some messages in the chat that they can't really hear you properly. Let me see. So, uh, I'm sorry about that. As I was saying, we are suffering from imported knowledge systems. And this is why we find that there's a disastrous and equal development in our countries. Uh, we pick up things and we take them home. And we don't care whether they are compatible with the people who are intended to use them. So we have this problem, and I think it comes um, as a result of um, just bringing in knowledge, uh, living our own uh, IKS. Yeah? And in fact, I've urged recently uh, when I was attending a World Bank project that the, 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 the projects they bring uh, are about to fail because they do not recognize who we are and what we need. They don't go to the ground to look at our priorities, our levels of understanding what they want to do. Somebody goes to my village speaking English, no interpreter, and he thinks this project will work. So the, the projects struggle to survive, and indeed, even education. I don't blame our, our, our people for failing those degrees and dissertations. Uh, because they are planted upon them. So uh, this incompatibility is competing for space against our IKS. And unfortunately, a lot of the foreign knowledge was brought in to exploit us. I mean, they are teaching us how to mine gold, thank you very much, but to make what? It is ornaments they desire. It's not, it's not for our own good. Uh, not that mining gold is bad, yeah? And we have tended to adopt these paradigms as means of survival. I, for example, earn a salary uh, because I adopted this Western paradigm. It is survival. And somebody, I think the previous presenter talked about funding. You write funding uh, proposals, and they are based on those people's understanding of what we need in Africa. We need the titles. Professor sounds very nice. Doctor sounds very nice. <laughs> Master's degree sounds fantastic. We like foreign travel. Boarding on the plane, I'm going to Washington, D.C., I'm going to, you know. All of these things have blinded us in so many ways. Uh, but overall, they have been destructive and hardly beneficial to us in the long term. So uh, our environments have suffered. Hey, this probably requires its own discussion. Um, I visited Kuruman, those areas there uh, in South Africa, Kauteng, uh, Vindihu, uh, no, not Vindihu. There are those areas, mining areas. They are potential disasters. I know there was one town where uh, that has gone. But the point though is we have suffered environmentally. Here in Uganda, uh, the agrochemicals are used. Uh, uh, Reckless people look at insects die, pests, but they cannot relate that, that, that death to the survival of the environment, the ecosystem they are living. You know? And so we have misinterpreted the use of these. And uh, on the back hand of that, on the other side of it, you find places where 
as soon as you mention you are African or something is from Africa, uh, the person who presented the earlier uh, actually put it very nicely. It, 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 is, it is satanic, it is uh, backward. And indeed, if you look at many of the development theories, they classify us as backward and they start from there. You see, of course, Maybe we look backward, but that is in relation to what they want to see, not what we want. Okay. Um, what has happened? These are some of the indicators and the utilization of our resources. We are never told about these. Never. You go to Zambia and ask an ordinary person how to process copper. So even here in Western Uganda, we have copper coal. In Congo, we mine these things in their raw form, and they take it, but they are very keen to sell us finished products. The people who mine uh, unfortunately distanced from the immediate communities where these min minerals are, uh, are situated. The other day I was watching a, a documentary about the journey diamonds take from Congo to Europe. I looked at one guy who carried uh, raw gold on his back for miles, for miles endangered by the possibility of being attacked by wild animals. And I said, honestly, these people are really cruel. I mean, you, know, you look at this guy and look what the proportion of uh, pay he gets this is really uh, not sustainable. Now, we see that, therefore, we have graduates that are not employable. Why? Because our knowledge is isolated from the utilization of our local resources. The, the, the employment comes from Western companies or companies linked to Western industries, not local, because we are never, education and culture are not linked to us, to our environment. Uh, one time, uh, as an example, I boarded a plane, Uganda Airlines, and I demanded to, 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 to be served with our local group. And the man just laughed at me, and I said, why, why not? Uh, the other time it was uh, in a South African airline. So, and I said, where is the Jibuku man? Man, can't <laughs> The man looked at me like I'm a strange animal. And, you know, and yet, if this was marketed, maybe our local people would have some employment. So a, a student, uh, someone lamented about uh, doing research, as I said earlier, yes, when you do uh, uh, literature review, your professors out there, of course, will front you with their own literature. Mm -hmm. we, we have been lazy to publish our own stories and research findings. And indeed, unfortunately, uh, literature about IKS and Ubuntu, is, it is growing, but maybe it is a challenge to make it appear valid in a PhD level research. You have to find some linkages to say, okay, it's Ubuntu, it is linked to feminism or something like that, then they will listen. <laughs> I had to change my supervisors actually at one stage because of that. Um, so when we do research and literature review, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you are aware, we are simply growing foreign knowledge systems. That's what we are growing. And indeed, a lot of the graduations mean that you are admitted as knowledgeable in that knowledge system. I remember very well the citation when you were being graduated. You say, yeah, Zake, you are admitted to the degree of so and so. Yes, you are admitted indeed, they are right. It is their knowledge system. You reach a level when you are proficient, you are 
and they see, you know, sufficiently enough. So let us give you a bachelor's, master's, or PhD. We lack that in Africa. It is a big, big battle, an uphill, if you like. Indeed, when you write academic papers, like I've been trying to, and I thank you for having journals to this effect, you will find that very few journals accept your papers based on our indigenous knowledge systems. There are arguments and wrong arguments. They are looking at IKS using uh, Eurocentric spectacles. Of course, it cannot, <laughs> it cannot add up. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we end up with the research that is isolated. I'm saying what should be done. Of course, we need to start with education. We need an education, uh, educational curriculum that appreciate and teach about IKS. Here I'm actually up in arms at the university. I'm saying, yeah, you people, you're talking of these other things, like, for example, in the management. You say, this are management theories, classical theories from long ago in Europe, when industries appeared. And you want our people here to know how to handle Ugandan employees using those foreign-based managerial uh, paradigms. Yeah, we, it reminds me one time when I was in Butterworth in South Africa. That is in East London. And one of our own became a bank manager. He was a local South African, but a friend. And all of us congratulated him. And you know what was going on on our minds? We knew now getting loans is going to be easy. We have our own. <laughs> it was inundated with applications. <laughs> Everybody walked in. I want a loan. I want a loan. I said, yeah, bro, you know what? <laughs> These are our Zungu things. <laughs> you need a mortgage. You need what? You need... <laughs> You know, the thing is, we don't know how to handle our people. The people who employed that guy didn't know that he's going to be inundated by our request. As Bantu, we are communal. We expect support. Yes? But this guy, some of, some of the people actually started to hate him, unnecessarily hate him. So we need to change the research approaches if we are going to get uh, valid data. Yes, uh, philosophical considerations like indigenous discourses. Indigenous discourses, yes. Our people knew to, to interpret facial expressions, for example. Without talking, somebody looks at you and you know he wants you out of the room. Yes. That's some of these discussions indigenous ones, they are not known. Local realities, poverty, values, see? and necessarily Ubuntu requires constructivism because we are communal people. We want to be social constructivists. We want to come up to a meaning together. We need people to interpret what they see. We don't want to lend them our interpretations. Emancipation, postmodernism, which considers things beyond what was sold to us as modern. Um, action research, because people get involved, and so on. Case studies, because these are unique situations. When I do research in my village, it won't be, it won't be the same as in Durban or in, in, in Botswana. These are necessarily the case study. Ethics, very, very important. Uh, our people have got their own ethical considerations, interpretive uh, approaches, qualitative, and discourse, as well as discourse analysis. Oh, that was... So, I'm looking at this development thing against Ubuntu. Somebody argued somewhere 
um, so that I haven't given references, I will in the paper I will submit. It, that it is a mental structure imposed. As I said at some point, we don't have a translation of development really. Maybe here in Uganda you say, Kula, Kula, Nabadis, you know. Um, so uh, this whole concept placed us in this, my predecessor said, North South dichotomy of economic development, uh, which is anti Ubuntu. Because you, you have this hierarchy uh, development stage one, two, three, four, five. Those of you who have read about development, I think it is Rosto who has stages, five stages of development. And so we are referred to as underdeveloped. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> because of these labels, we, we are driven to copy what they have. You go to New York and you see those tall skyscrapers and you think you will change Kampala to that. How? Do we need it anyway to start with? But it's all that mental structure this person is talking about. And in the way it is brought, it negates our own culture. Yeah? And the perceptions of who we are um, become very, we think of ourselves as poor. Yes. Uh, but we forget that this is relative to a culture. Okay, so what we need to do maybe is to redefine development based on our IKS. It's a tall order, but I think we need to do that. Otherwise, development as it stands is a foreign concept based on mainly Eurocentric value systems. Um, or let us find hybrids of IKS best and international development. Now, that is, I think, possible, as it is in the research. So some of these are development paradigms from Western uh, viewpoints, post-development. Why? Because it is interested in local cultures and knowledge. It is critical of whatever is pro established already. It is interested in... Uh, promotion of local grassroots movements. It considers solidarity. In other words, involvement of the others, um, positive development. Sustainable development has been around for some time, works well with positive development. Um, it's so much about securing the future of our generations to come. Um, it is also mindful of the current capacity of our natural ecosystems, such as the ecosystems and the challenges we face. It is compatible with human development theory linked to ecology, feminism, welfare economics. Uh, it considers social capital, the value of human beings, what people can do. Uh, and this year is very important because uh, sustainable development is not so much into monetary benefits. Critical modernism, I'm sure many of you have heard about Obama's and Obama's, uh, draws from Marxists. Uh, I know some countries don't like Marxism. Uh, but the point we are at, we are interested in restructuring power relations, obviously. As formerly colonized people, we are interested in those distribution of power. It has to change, not only in terms of resources, but also in terms of knowledge. Uh, we have to listen to the people, those who are uh, uh, downtrodden, we have to think of their needs that we have to meet. We have to know the power of discourse. The, the researchers on this forum I will tell you that um, uh, 
this course is very, very powerful if you are going to use qualitative research. Um, it looks at the lenses of power. There are examples here where Ubuntu, Ubuntu can be applied to hospitalization industries. One reason we get so many tourists is the way we treat them. And if we can encourage Ubuntu, Ubuntu in this industry, I think we'll get more tourists. Uh, we'll get more of them coming over here instead of other continents. Uh, economic models, I think we need socialist ones. Uh, Tanzania had one, Jama. Uh, I do realize here at home how the sale of land has improvised uh, people. People are really poor around here because they are encouraged to sell their land. Um, this is of resources. Uh, hitherto, we used to share these resources. I remember as I grew up, we had communal uh, water resources. Where is that everybody collected water from? And because of that, the, 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 those resources were cared for communal. Uh, value addition should come from here. We should be able to make products out of raw materials, which uh, answer to our fashions. We should also be able to sell fashions. I know that is starting a bit, but I'm talking here about the other mineral resources as well. Uh, localized fashion, agroecology, we need to limit agrochemicals, pesticides, insecticides, use our old biological systems to improve our productivity of food, limit genetically modified varieties. By the way, this is a serious matter. Today, Uganda here, we have genetically modified uh, chicken, which do not reproduce. What does that mean? It means you continuously have to go back and buy chicks from those people. Um, health, local hubs, lately, uh, we have realized how our forefathers and mothers survived. And if we could go into this, we could reduce on the importation of drugs. We have COVID X here, which was the, the design that developed here in Uganda to, to treat uh, COVID 19. And interestingly and annoyingly, uh, here, Ugandans could buy Chinese herbs, very red, but not our own. <laughs> you go and somebody goes to the Chinese so, uh, shop, buys uh, labeled Chinese herb that can help your blood to saturate and leaves our own, own herbs fresh, very, very fresh. But the mindset that imported things are superior is still uh, a problem. The care. By the way, when I was in Australia, uh, one of my colleagues at staff, I was at the University of New England, I was teaching there. They were surprised at how in Uganda, relatives are allowed into hospitals to care for their sick. And I think uh, they sent a team to go and see. Maybe it's something that we can say. Taxation and so on. Well, in conclusion, I'm saying our philosophy is like a people. I survived years. And we should ask why. It must be useful. Just survived. It didn't start with us, yeah? yeah? Yeah. It is compatible with our African environments and us. So it should be the foundation of all development projects. I thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Professor, for uh, this 
wonderful presentation. If you're able to see people's faces when you are speaking, they were actually agreeing with you. And also you have, uh, if you're able to see the posts in the chat, people are really agreeing with uh, most of the uh, you know, arguments that you're putting across. And uh, I think it's very important that we actually listen to fellow Africans challenging us to think about even post-development where we use yeah. our own, you know, our own knowledges to actually define what development is. Because we've taken on these mm. labels and we are feeling inferior that we are poor or we are not yes. developed. When in actual sense, you know, our de development is being defined by someone else. And, uh, yeah. and we are not appreciating that the cultural assumptions behind, uh, you know, what is being termed as, uh, as development. Uh, I won't take much time. Please, uh, if you have questions for Professor, you can raise your hand uh, and also post, uh, post in the chat. Uh, yes, Cornelius, uh, you have your hand up. Uh, could you ask Professor, please? So keep it short, please, so that uh, you know, so that the Professor is able to answer you. Yes, Cornelius. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, mine is not a question as such, but uh, I just would like to appreciate uh, Professor Mwanga Sake because the uh, the il submission and illustration he has just done is relevant to what I am researching in my PhD. And I would also to just comment that he, he talked about the, uh, our education system not being informed by the that we have. I also think that the major problem that we have within the edu African education system is that uh, our curricula is not being informed by the indigenous problems that are taking place in the villages in Hoima, Masindi, Chatondo, or in Tsolo in the Transike. Mm -hmm. So I think that we should do when coming up with the, you know, the curricula for social work or the education system in, in general for Africa mm -hmm. is that we must learn from the problems that are taking place mm -hmm. on our continent and then design an education system that is seeks to address our local mm -hmm. Because the, as it stands at the end of the day, most of the social workers that are being trained in Africa are not relevant in mm. addressing the problems we have. That's why they are more employable in the United Kingdom, in Australia, Canada, or USA. Yeah, exactly. Just in irrelevant in addressing local problems. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the comment. Yeah, thank you for the comment, uh, Cornelius. Uh, I think you're touching on uh, most of us. I'm, I'm in diaspora, and I think uh, given the training I got, uh, my skills better fit here. So I think if we are to talk about social workers for African communities, then we must actually train uh, you know, people in African values, in African methods, uh, so that we are able to, uh, you know, to work for our communities. Um, I'm very lucky. I have one lady who has, you know, put up her hand. So I'll please give her the opportunity, Agnes Tembo, and then we will have, uh, we'll have, we'll have James Mbiru. So Agnes Tembo, could you please ask your question? Just keep it very short. Thank you very much for the opportunity to ask a question. Uh, first of all, thank you for this great. Um, lecture that I uh, have attended, rather the session, it has been very impressive. It's touching on a conference theme that I'm having here in Australia, reimagining nursing in an uncertain world. And um, looking at the lecture that we have had, my question is, how do we transplant Ubuntu into the diaspora? because we have left Africa, but we haven't left our Africanness. And being in Africa, in, in the diaspora, we are a minority and possibly marginalized community. And uh, this is something which poses a challenge. How do we challenge the place where we are living 
to look at our needs as Africans, as Ubuntu. For instance, COVID had an impact on some of the tenets of Ubuntu, the interconnectedness, the sharing, and all those things. How does the medical system rise to this challenge to deliver holistic care for Ubuntu people? Professor, do you want first to respond to that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is, a, that is a total order because those countries where you are living have their own systems. And you would be arrested maybe or something. <laughs> it is a challenge. But here in our own countries, there's no excuse not to practice. Somebody else can add. I ask yeah. this question because uh, there is a, a push to be inclusive. And the Australian um, statistics show that uh, the Sub Saharan Africa, particularly, um, Sub Saharan African migrants are minority. And as such, the, the uh, parliament representatives recognize that these people do not receive um, health services as equally as the Anglo-Saxons, for instance. And uh, I am actually, uh, I'm also grateful for the fact that as a nurse, I've been able to join this. I wanted to join the group, but it says you must be a social worker. And the other question I have is how multidisciplinary are we? Because from a medical point of view, when we treat a patient, we look at, we approach them uh, from a multidisciplinary aspect. And I include a social worker to look after that patient as well. So you I, include a person to deliver a lecture at this conference as I'm, well. I think I think I'm I'm sorry, but I I think Agnes, um, your your question is very relevant to the current situation of the African community in Australia, and therefore there's few of us who are working on this. Um, um, Dr. Jokov, who is uh, who was facilitating the PES um, uh, the PES presentation, is is um. It's doing a bit of work with me, and I I would love maybe to suggest this uh, to Jacob that it is opportunity for us also to be able to have a network in Australia and be able to discuss some of these things, and especially promoting the Ubuntu, um, you know, in our society, whether from the social work lens or the nursing lens from the medical perspective we need to be able to do this and mm -hmm. that is our role yeah yeah thank you abu and i think you have done a publication as well uh where you touch on the relevancy of ubuntu in australia and we really agree with you uh, i think we are moving towards taking that multidisciplinary uh you know approach in a way we do things uh james Mbir, could you please ask your question oh thanks so much i appreciate uh prof zake and the Prof. Chirisi, I'll, you know, ramble around. I, I notice we have a lot of Australians in here, and personally, I got to know about this presentation from one of our platform, Africa Australian uh, Research Network. So somebody posted in our link and was like, oh, this looks as an interesting uh, session to attend. I'm glad I've attended. Thank you so, so much. Uh, a few questions around Dr. Uh, Professor Zaki's presentation. Uh, one he mentioned about uh, uh, some of the managerial concepts uh, being delivered in the Ugandan or African context when you are teaching and they are turning obsolete, or obsolete, which is very true. But when you look at uh, much of the ongoing teaching today in the modern worlds, I would say modern worlds or the developed worlds, it's turning into contemporary theories. So they are dropping all the traditional theories of teaching. And likewise, when you look at the uh, executive MBAs, gone are the days of using textbooks to teach uh, content. You have to invite participants in a class and then you talk about 
current things, what's, what works and what doesn't work. And in that aspect, do you think IKS, indigenous knowledge, part of it is also turning obsolete and we need to drop it? And we maybe all look into ways of modernizing it. And I'm glad you mentioned about the hybrid method. Can we up, uh, approach it from the hybrid angle? We mix it with uh, contemporary uh, skills. The textbooks we use to teach indigenous theories. When you look at the pres uh, present teaching today, I I'm a teacher, I I'm a lecturer in, in Australia, University of Tasmania at a business school. When you use a textbook in the previous year, today that's obsolete. You drop it. You look for a new textbook, which is current, two years to go. How is the practice in Africa? Do we have people who are continuously publishing books such that we teach students current knowledge instead of relying on publications which are like uh, 10 years ago? The last question I have is, is it possible for both Professor Zaki and Professor Chirisi to clarify, is Ubuntu the same as empathy and humility in the Caucasian language? Thank you. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> okay, um, I may go first. In regards to uh, teaching methodologies, uh, management methodologies. I think the challenge we have is probably related to the cocktail I talked about. Regardless of what is contemporary, say, in Australia, and indeed, you may find that uh, the owner of a company running in Uganda is Australia and they expect a certain level of uh, standards of management. This company, our company here, unfortunately, the people they are dealing with are not at that level, that level of modernity. The, 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 as I say, we have a cocktail. Uh, you can imagine, I go to my village, every weekend almost, when I can. And the people I'm dealing with are people who will sit you down on the ground, not even a chair, to explain certain things. There are people who will tell you that this cow should eat that particular grass and not that uh, drug. So we have to work at so many different levels. Yeah, attendant to the cocktail I'm talking about, the kind of management and teaching that you may want to implement in the village like I'm talking about is probably not the same as the one in Australia or some schools and universities in Kampala, the capital of Uganda. It is a challenge. It is a challenge which, unless we do research those fundamentals of the whole thing will be lost. It is upon us to go back and lift up what is what has made people survive in these parts of the world. Um, it is very clear that some of the modern theories, sciences, and the ways of doing things, as much as they look modern and advanced, have failed. I would argue that the rapid changes are sometimes a result of implementing systems that don't work and therefore require an immediate change. Mm. You bring a theory in this year and by next year it is not working. It is telling you that it was inappropriate. So maybe when we go back and look at our systems, work through them, I don't know at what speed, but the point I'm raising here, we shouldn't leave anybody behind. Mm. What, what has happened 
a lot of us, PhD holders, professors, we are living in a different world from the one of our people. There's a gap, if yeah. you like, in technology, what we call a digital gap. But in the real terms of living, livelihoods, there's a gap. And we cannot, that's not sustainable because they are the majority. We can enjoy our lives in the cities, going to London and so on, but we'll come back to this people. And their challenges will hurt one day. These are some of the reasons you see strikes. Um, this was very uh, clear in South Africa. Uh, people who don't live in South Africa may not realize that the reasons you get those extreme strikes and damage of property and so on is partly because of that gap I'm talking about. The people striking are left behind. And they don't see any value in those tall buildings and hi fis and TVs. Because after all, they cannot afford them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor, for this, uh, you know, for the insightful presentation and for challenging us to value what we have, but to put, to put first our communities. I think it's not really about rushing about what is modern but what is mm. very important, uh, you know, for our yeah. communities. I will now draw this to a close and I will invite uh, Professor Genestic Twichirize to give some uh, closing remarks, uh, only two minutes, and then we'll have uh, Professor Chinenana also to give uh, closing remarks on behalf of, uh, of Aswanet. Uh, please keep it short, uh, two, two minutes, so that we can uh, finish at uh, 25 past eight. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Charlotte and Jacob, for organizing this. Thank you, Aswa. Thank you, uh, As Aswanet. And thank you, our speakers, Professor Chilisa and Professor Mwanga. Thank you very much for this. Uh, you know, for the many decades as social workers in Africa, we've concentrated so much on, you know, lamenting and mourning the fact that, you know, uh, the social work we teach, our education system and practice is not relevant, etc. So it is very, very refreshing that we are going beyond lamenting and mourning uh, to actually do something. So I'm extremely excited about the launch of these annual lectures and the launch of the forum that brings us together. And it's, it's also very refreshing to see that we are not just, you know, Africans in Africa, but, you know, the diaspora and all that. And, uh, you know, that again brings so many heads together and just like our African uh, proverb says uh, it's the joint efforts actually that achieve what we want to achieve. So I wish you all the best as we move this forward. And I pray that uh, we can uh, spread the word because this has been extremely enriching. We can spread the word so that next time uh, more and more people are brought on board. Again, thanks to the organizers and thank you so much uh, to our esteemed speakers. God bless you. Chimewana from University of Lagos. In fact, I must um, confess that I appreciate the speakers, the professor, Professor Chilisa and Professor Mwanga Zaki. It has been very, very exciting, very, very um, educative. In, but I, I want to say something just like Professor Mwanga Zake said, the lecturers, the educators, we need a lot of education about Ubuntu. Particularly, we need to look at our curriculum. I mean, the different countries need to look at the curricula and adopt um, Ubuntu so that everybody will be on the same page. We need, for it, in, Recently, we are uh, having a debate in Nigeria here whether to continue with um, um, family care for our elderly persons or to adopt the old people's home, the nursing home, and whatever. So these are the issues. So for our um, contributors, 
I, 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 I appreciate your sharing your experiences, particularly the doctoral candidates from different places. And I want to thank the organizers, Maza and um, Charlotte, for doing a great job for this part, um, inaugural um, lecture on Ubuntu. I gained a lot. And um, I want to promise you here that whatever I have learned here, I will take it down to the curriculum in um, social work education in Nigeria, because um, I, I was one of those who harmonized the curricula of um, universities in Nigeria. And um, we need to review to bring in Ubuntu into our curriculum so that everybody, even our students, um, we do that. So, and uh, I want to appreciate Aswanet for, I mean, bringing me on board and um, all the other members of the team for the great job we are doing. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward for the next lecture. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. It was a great opportunity. Um, I look forward to enjoying other uh, lectures on Ubuntu, on indigenous methodologies. I look forward to seeing Ashnet um, joining hands with uh, Afria, uh, especially on issues of research methodologies and evaluation uh, and evaluation guiding principles uh, for Africa that can address some of the problems that we have, such as uh, panda colonialism, um, pedagogical uh, colonialism, mm -hmm. um, capacity building, and so on and so on. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we'll have this recording shared on the, the websites of Aswanet and also Aswa, so you can look out and listen if you're if you're interested.